Hello and welcome. I would like to take this opportunity to walk you through Milady Standard Cosmetology Course Management Guide, the print edition. Milady Standard Cosmetology Course Management Guide is the most comprehensive course management guide ever published. Its purpose is to aid the educator in meeting the objectives of advancing and improving the standards of education in your institution. It is designed to serve as your partner in making cosmetology education effective, interesting, and fun. <clears throat> the binder is divided into ten tabs, and I'd like to walk through each one of these and explain what each one uh, consists of. Tab one is the preface. This contains a detailed explanation of how to use the course management guide. I highly recommend that you take five minutes and read through this document. It's, it's three or four pages long, and it will really walk you through each section of the binder and help you understand how to best use the course management guide. If you're ever unsure about something, go back, reread this preface, and it will really give you a great understanding of how to use the course management guide. Tab 2 contains the transition tools. This is the tool that is going to aid you, the educator, in transitioning from one edition of the textbook to the new edition. So what you see here, we are transitioning from the 2008 edition of the textbook to the 2012 edition of the textbook. The form is divided into three columns. If you look at the first column, you'll see Milady Standard Cosmetology 2012 edition. It will tell you Chapter 20 is the chemical, chapter, chemical Texture Services chapter, and it will list the objectives that are in that chapter. The second column will refer you back to 2008 edition, and it will show you where the exact same information can be found in the 2008 edition. So in this case, the 2012 Chapter 20 is Chapter 18 in the 2008 edition, and here are the objectives so you can compare what, um, what the students were learning in the 2008 edition versus what they're going to learn in the 2012 edition. The third column will be the one that's probably most useful to you. It gives an overview of what information is contained in both editions. So essentially the same information regarding chemical texture services is available in these two chapters. If you look at the 2012 edition, it will tell you new information includes Japanese thermal straighteners and references that have been deleted. Many of them were moved to Chapter 4, the communications chapter in the 2012, include the client consultation guidelines and client records. So as you have students that are in both editions, if you will take this and use this when you are preparing your class, then you're going to be able to refer your students to the correct place in their textbook, no matter which edition they have. So as you transition, while you have students in both books, this is one of the most beneficial tools that you have available to you. Tab 3 contains instructor support material. Uh, there are two sample forms that are available, and these are used to create a program, develop your program a little bit further if you'd like. The first one that you'll see is the course syllabus, a course outline. The one in the binder is a sample for a 1,500-hour um, cosmetology program. It is a brief two-page document that contains all the elements required in a course outline. It is to provide you assistance in developing a course syllabus specific to your program offered at your institution. The second form is a theory grade record. This is a way to document a theory test for your students. It lists each of the tests that are found in the course management guide. There is a column to record the grade. There is a column to record the date the student took it. There's actually a column to record the day you post it to the computer. Uh, in this day and age, many of us have computerized um, programs that help us track all of our students' records. This is just kind of a hard copy that allows you on one sheet of paper to see everything, and then you can record those grades into your computer. This would allow you for accrediting uh, issues to keep this piece of paper as opposed to all the individual tests should you choose to. The 
because of this next column here, it has a place for the student to initial or sign that, yes, they did take that grade on that day. So it's a way of documenting all the tests without having to keep every individual student test. So, again, these are just sample forms that you can recreate. You can create them just like this if you choose to, or you can use it as a sample and, and develop your own based on it. Whatever you want to use, they're just some support materials for the school to use. Tabs 4 through 9 contain the detailed lesson plans. Now, they are divided up based on the way the textbook is divided. So you have part one behind tab four, which are your orientation lessons, um, lesson or chapter one, orientation, two, life skills, chapter three, professional image, and chapter four, communication. The lesson plans to go with that section of the textbook are all behind tab four. Tab five, tab five are your sciences. Tab six is your hair care. Tab seven, skin care, so on and so forth. So um, I want to take a look at the lesson plans for just a minute because this is really the bulk of the course management guide. This is the purpose of the course management guide is to provide you lesson plans to where they're already developed and you don't have to spend hours recreating your own lesson plan. The idea behind a lesson plan, it's, it's a tool to organize the instructional time and ensure that all planned material is covered in an orderly manner. These are written in a way that you no longer have to spend hours writing your own lesson plan, yet they are flexible enough that you can add information to reflect the regulations in your state, to reflect the philosophies of your school, and to present your professional knowledge. Look at the lesson plan as a roadmap, an overview to the chapter. By every instructor using the same lesson plans, we ensure that we have consistency in our education and we ensure that all the students are getting presented with the same material for their education. Now, that doesn't mean you don't add you into it. As an instructor, you bring you into the lesson plan with your stories and your anecdotes and your experiences, and you follow the lesson plan that is published to stay on target, and you bring you into it, and that's how it comes to life with you, okay? Now, I want to walk through the format of the lesson plan just a minute. You'll notice that the very first page um, up at the top, it identifies it as a class sign-in sheet. And then this one here, the example has a 1.0 after it. That's the lesson plan number. So lesson plan 1.0 corresponds to chapter one of the textbook. If we had lesson plan 15.0 up here, it would correspond to chapter 15 in the textbook. So the lesson plan numbers correspond to the chapter numbers. If by chance there is a lesson plan that has more than one lesson plan to it, um, I believe the haircutting is is an example of that. So in the haircutting lesson plan, it would be identified as um, lesson plan 16.0, and then the second lesson plan would be lesson plan 16.1, and then 16.2. All right. So the the first number always corresponds to the chapter number in the textbook. The first page, we call it a class sign-in sheet. It identifies the lesson objectives, the tools and implements that's required by both the student and the instructor, teaching aids that you need, the facility, time allotment. Now, a little bit on time allotment. I want you to realize that this, this course management guide is written for 50 different states, some states with as few as 1,000 hours, many states over 2,000 hours. And so you have to allot the time based on your schedule. 1,000-hour program, you're going to spend much less time on some of the subjects versus a 2,000-hour state. So this is a, a suggested time allotment based on the details that you set up in your own curriculum in your own school. At the bottom of the page, you will play, see a place for student signatures. Now, what you do with this page is you can photocopy this page before class, print this page out, or photocopy it, I'm sorry, pass it around your classroom, have each student sign in. If there's not enough signature lines, have them flip it over to the back of the page and sign on the back of the page. The instructor signs it up here and dates it, and then you can hole punch that, put it in a three-ring binder, and you have a great record of your class and who attended your class each week. This is really good for that student that comes to you and says, well, I never learned this. You, it's, it's a documentation tool for you to go back and say, well, we taught this subject on this date. You signed in for it. You did attend this. Or perhaps they weren't there that day. So it's really a documentation for you. 
It's also a way to document for your state boards or your accrediting agency that we have covered the material we are mandated to cover by law. So it's a great documentation for, tool for you every day. They just put the new sign-in sheet in a binder, and at the end of the year, you have one binder with a great record of that theory class. Uh, the second page of the course management guide looks pretty much just like this. The only piece that changes is down at the bottom, there will be a place called educator references, which are notes to the educator, just a couple of ideas and suggestions. And the student signature changes to instructor signature, and it's a way for an instructor just to document each time they teach that lesson plan. There's no need to print a new lesson plan every time you teach it or recopy this. Simply use this as a working document and get in there and initial that I taught this on this date. That way if a substitute has to come in, they're able to go to the binder and have a pretty good idea of what topic you're on. The next part of the lesson plans is the learning motivation and the thought of the day. Every class we need to begin with getting the students enrolled into why we are teaching this subject because the first question they have is why do I need to know this? And that's what the learning motivation do. The learning learning motivation will do for you. It will help you with why this information is important. To be honestly honest, many of you guys probably have really great learning motivations of your own already. This is a perfect opportunity for you to make this lesson plan your own and bring your own knowledge into why this subject is so critical. For those of you um, who might struggle coming up with, I don't know why this is important, it's already documented for you and you can share this with your student. The piece I really like is the thought of the day, the inspirational thought of the day you will see right here. You can write that up on your marker board when the students are coming into class. A lot of schools do different things with this. Some schools might have a student write it in their journal and this is what this quote means to me. Other schools might just have a, a two-minute conversation around the quote and what comes up for the student as they hear that quote. It's just a kind of a way to engage your student into thoughts of success by putting an inspirational thought of the day up on the board for them to talk about. The lesson plan itself is divided into two column format. The left hand side is a, um, a brief outline of the material contained in the chapter. It, it follows along the chapter um, outline and the right column will provide in-depth notes that, are, that expands on what you see over here in the left hand column. It includes supplementary material that supports the outline. The in-depth notes are comments that instructors can actually verbalize or paraphrase to their students. The information is, there, there will also be at various points in the in-depth notes, you may see a word that says note to educator. And after that note to the educator, is not information you're going to share with your students, but it will, in, in, it will tell you that hand out this handout at this time, or um, you can use this transparency, or do this activity. Those are all built in to this in-depth notes. And you use those based on your needs. Um, you may not want to do that activity, and that's fine. You may have time for it, you may not. Whatever works best for you. Each lesson plan ends with a summary and review. We know that the basic premise of every class is you tell them what you're going to tell them. That starts with the objectives and the learning motivation. Then you tell them, and that's the overview content that we just looked at. And then you tell them what you just told them. Every class needs to end with a summary and review. And a summary of each lesson plan is already written in here for you. So you just have to go in there, paraphrase it, and state it back to the students of here's what we talked about today basic rule of education. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. There's also a list of review questions already written for you. These review questions are actually the same review questions that are in the end of each chapter in the student textbook. So that's where those two books correspond together. Find creative ways to use those review questions, not just read them to them and have them throw back the answer to you. Put them into groups, give them each one to answer, and have them present it to the class. Get a creative way to use those uh, review questions. Nothing wrong with the standard Q&A. That's, that's a perfectly acceptable thing. I'm just saying change it up sometimes and, and do it different from time, one time to the next. The learning reinforcement ideas and activities that are found at the end of every lesson plan is simply a list of ideas 
that you can incorporate into your class, another list of activities. So the textbook itself has a few activities built into it. As you go through the lesson plan, there will be some activities or discussions built into it. And then here at the end, there is another list of detailed activities that you can choose to put in your classroom. You may have time to do five of them. You may have time to do one of them. Uh, some of them are assignments that you could give to the students when they're working in the student salon and they're not busy. Take a look at those learning reinforcement ideas before you go into class so you have a good idea which ones you want to incorporate into your lesson. The, le the lesson plans also contain handouts, transparencies, teaching tools. Uh, the handouts are identified at the bottom of each by a lesson plan 2.0. H-1, and that's going to be the handout or the procedure. Um, each procedure we have created into a handout that you can photocopy these pages and give to your students. The transparencies will be identified much the same way, Lesson Plan 16.0 T-1. When it, you see a T, it's designed to use as a transparency. That doesn't mean you can't use it as a handout. Go ahead and make it as a handout if you choose to. Uh, we do not make the transparency films in the binder themselves. That is something that you'd have to make on your own. Make sure that the transparency film that you bought corresponds to the type of copy machine that you have. Otherwise, it could really damage your machine. So um, make your transparencies if you want to. Teaching tools are when there's an activity and then learning reinforcement um, ideas that need support tools. This is where you'd find it at the end of the lesson plan. There will be a teaching tool on it. The practical skills competency evaluation criteria is um, a list of basically all the procedures step by step so that you can go in and evaluate the student's performance on each skill set. They list specific performance criteria which can be used with the school's practical grading criteria to determine a student's com competency in any given practical skill set. There is also a test. Every lesson plan contains a multiple choice test. These tests are a different bank of questions than those that are used in the Course Management Guide CD-ROM exam view test bank or even the questions that are used in the exam review book. This is a completely different set of questions for you to use. So you can use this as a test. You might use it as a pretest. You might use it as a study test, all depending on the needs of your school. Use it however you choose. The last tab in the binder is a resource tab. This is just a few pages that are dedicated to a list of resources that are available to cosmetology institutions to further advance their goals and objectives of providing quality cosmetology education and preparing graduates for gainful employment in the field of cosmetology. So take a minute, look at these resources and see what's available to really um, help you deliver the best education that you can. In the binder itself, you will find a CD-ROM. Now, the CD-ROM that is located in the binder is not the entire course management guide on CD-ROM. You will notice here on the side, it says course management guide, but when you look at the details over here on the left-hand side of the disk, it will say it is the answers to the theory workbook the practical workbook, and the study guide, the essential companion. So the CD-ROM that is found in the print binder is only the answers to the workbooks. It is not the entire course management guide on CD. So I hope that clarifies the, the, the specific of that CD available to you. So that is it on the course management guide. It is an amazing tool to support you in your education, to give you that roadmap of providing great education to your students, to ensuring consistency between all instructors, between all classes. If you have any other questions about the course management guide that supports Milady Standard Cosmetology, please feel free to contact your account manager. You see their phone number there on the screen. Or go to the website, check out milady.cengage.com, see what else is available to support you in your quest to provide absolutely fantastic education to your students. As always, Milady wishes you great success. We're your partner in lifelong learning.